What I'm about to show you is quite literally, and I mean literally, the most broken end board Duel Links has ever seen. Ever. You guys remember the Harpy meta, right? Of one slash plus a couple of back row. What about the tier 0 onomatopoeia meta of double rank 6 exceeds monster, one negate plus one non-target remove? How about the Shiranui meta of true back row plus one big boss monster pass turn? Well, take all those end boards and throw them out the window, as this deck not only has one disruption, not two, not three, not four, but five disruptions. Of the six slots you have in Duel Links, five of them are going to be some form of disruption. This deck is bonkers. And the funniest thing about it is this deck makes that end board without having any cards in hand. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I go through the deck list, if you're enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like it in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer as apparently only about 60% of the people watching this video are even subscribed to the channel, yet almost all of them are returning viewers. So if you do enjoy this kind of stuff and want to see more deck lists from me in the future, remember to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss a deck list. Alright, let's get into the deck list. So today's deck list, I'm always completely tempted to just skip over this portion of the video entirely, as I just want to get straight into showing you the gameplay and the combos this deck can pull off, as they are ridiculous. For example, going second, a typical end board for this deck will be a 6,000 attack on Imaru, who's completely indestructible, and he can attack multiple times a turn. Now that just sounds ridiculous, but then you realise, that's not all this deck ends on. You end on the Onimaru, and then right next to it, you have the piercing damage 2600 attack Rhino Cebus, who's a card that also has non-target removal attached to him. That is bonkers. And whilst you're summoning out these cards, you'll be summoning out the Infernity Doom Archfiend multiple times with no cards in hand, which this card can actually just target cards your opponent controls, negate them, and destroy them. And since it's not technically a hard once per turn, and you resummon this guy multiple times, you get to remove multiple cards using this dude before you even get into the Seabus or the Onimaru. This deck is ridiculous. And that's just going second. This deck's typical going first board is actually its strong suit. This deck's typical going first board will end on your Rhino once again, but this time he'll go with a Red Wyvern, which is a card that during either player's turn, if a monster with higher attack than this Synchro Summon card is on the field, you can destroy the face-up monster on the field with the highest attack. So if your opponent ever actually gets out a big boy, you can just remove it with this card whenever you like. On top of that, with these two guys on board, you'll actually have three different trap cards as well. Well, more commonly you only have two of them, but sometimes you get lucky and you can search for the third as well. This is includes an Infinity Barrier, which is a card that can negate any spell and trap card or any monster effect. You have the brand new Infinity Suppression, which is a card that can negate any monster effect as long as you have an Infinity Monster on the field. And you have your Infinity Break, which is a card that can banish cards from your graveyard to destroy cards your opponent controls. Now to summon these cards, you're essentially just going to loop the same three cards a ridiculous amount of times, because for some reason, Konami doesn't know what a hard once per turn is. We could be looping the Infernity Launcher, the Infernity Archfiend, and the brand new card Infernity Sage. So if you don't know how this deck works by now, the entire point of Infernity is basically to have no cards in hand, and you gain a bunch of effects for doing so. So Infernity Launcher, once per turn, you summon Infernity Monster from your hand to the graveyard. You can send this card to the graveyard, then tie up two Infernity Monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. So the two cards you want to summon are your Tuna Monster, the Infernity Sage, who's level 2, and of course, Infernity Archfiend, who's a level 4. When this card is special summoned, you can add one Infernity card from your deck to your hand. So basically, you get this card, you summon these two dudes, search this card back out again, synchro summon into a level 6, then rinse and repeat a trillion times, until you end on the most disgusting board you can possibly imagine. And on top of that, this card doesn't just search for launcher, of course, it can also search for all three of the Infernity trap cards as well. Now the cool thing about this deck list is you might have seen some Infernity deck lists almost identical to this in the past, 
But now we have the brand new Tuna Monster, Infinity Sage, which is a card that actually acts as a second starter if you don't get hold of Infinity Archfiend. So essentially, this deck list became infinitely more consistent than it already was. Because your Infinity Sage, during the main phase you can discard your entire hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send one Infinity Monster from your deck to the graveyard. So it actually acts as a search for your Infinity Archfiend if you get a hold of your Infinity Launcher, which is your brand new start for this deck, and once again, a brand new combo that makes this deck ridiculously consistent. Alright guys, that's going to do it for the necklace portion of the video. The rest of the video will be gameplay with commentary showcasing the combos this deck can do, and without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so today I have four replays to show you guys, two going first and two going second, all of which are going to show off some pretty damn nasty end boards and some nasty scenarios, especially in the last replay where I was actually disrupted multiple times and just played through it as if nothing happened. Because you notice this deck list actually has no back row removal and basically no way to stop your opponent kind of disrupting you, but you can still sometimes just play through it anyway if you have a nasty enough hand. But generally this deck list does of course want to go first, as like I said, no back row removal does make it kind of hard. Alright, let's get into it. So the first three plays will be going first, as that's kind of the deck's main focus. Alright. Alright, so a nice little hand we got here. First thing we're going to do is summon out the brand new card Infinity Sage, which lets us discard our hand, and thankfully we drew ourselves the Monster Reborn. So activate Monster of Born to bring back the Archfiend, and now we can start our combo. Because Archfiend will search for a Launcher, you can also search for a Trap card here if you like, doesn't really matter. Activate your skill shell of a Ghost, which when you have no cards in hand, you can place an Infinity Launcher on top of the deck. Then we Synchro Summon ourselves into a Stardust Charge Warrior, who when summoned draws a card, drawing into the Infinity Launcher you place on top of the deck. Launcher then brings back the two monsters, once again giving us a search. In this case, I search for my final, oh, not my final launch, but one of my launches. Secret summoning once again into Coral Dragon. Now we have two six monsters on board, so we can go into our Exa Beetle, and then into our Wino Seabus. Launcher popping, summoning back the two boys, gives us a search. This time I think we do search for a trap card. Yep, going to Suppression. Normally Suppression is one of the weaker of the trap cards to grab, but I want to show, off the, show it off more in this video because it's new, and it is a card that you do want to run in this deck because of some of the other replays I'll show in a bit. You'll see in a bit why you want to run this card. One of the main reasons of course because you can get out three trap cards all the time, but the other reason is the fact you can use this on your going second play is also really strong at dealing with hand traps. Alright, summoning out the Wyvern, using my final launcher to search for the Archfeed, which searches for one of our trap cards, and we pass the turn. Opponent activates a mystical space typhoon. We don't care, we've got plenty of disruption here. Summons out some guys. I, I choose not to pop the Blackwing Zephyros, as I know he'll just resummon it, so there's not a whole lot of point in that. So I'm just gonna let him do a summon first. Goes into his <laughs> bug, thinking that's gonna be enough. We pop it. He tries to summon this dude back, but it's a monster effect, so we just negate it. And she's a bit of damage in response. Alright. Replay number two. So as you can see, that was a disgusting end board. And this one is going to be even more disgusting, as that was just your typical end board with two back row. This is going to be your typical back row, oh sorry, your typical end board, but with three back row. Alright. Alright. So this starting hand was absolutely bonkers, and we opened two launcher, and we opened Archfeed, which is basically all you need to play the game. So when you set the two uh, launchers ready to use them, normal summon this dude, and discard the Archfeed to special summon it back to the field, and gives a search, going for our suppression. Shell of a ghost, placing the dude on top. So we can synchro summon once again, Charge Warrior. Charge Warrior draws the card, activate it, we're going to summon two dudes back again, giving us another search for Infinity Launcher. Synchro summoning into Coral Dragon, so then we go into our rank 6, going to our Exa Beetle, going into our Rhino. Launcher bringing back the two dudes, giving us another search. Grabbing Infinity Barrier, which is our Omni Negate. Synchro summoning once again into Wyvern, which is our destruction of dudes with big attack. Once again, summoning out the Archfiend and grabbing our final trap card in 30 break. So now we end on 
the Rhinoceros, which can pop cards on field. We end on the Wyvern, which can also pop cards on field. And we end on a Barrier, we end on Suppression, and Break. Really disgusting. Mystical Space Typhoon pops one. Mystical Space Typhoon pops another. But even then, we still have three lots of disruption on board. I use my Inferni Barrier, pop his card so he can't resummon it, and it's gone. Admittedly, probably shouldn't have used Barrier there, should have used one of the monster effects. My opponent had like a Treacherous or something, I probably just threw the game, but that was fine. <laughs> we'll save from any monsters he tries to summon anyway. Alright, game number three. So now we're into the going second plays. Now a lot of people when they see this deck, they think, oh my god, it's just auto-lose going second, it can't win. That's not really true. This replay isn't a good example of that, but the second one you'll see is a good example. This deck can actually play going second, even through some disruption. You do have to get some pretty good hands to do so though. Obviously the main strat of this deck is to make such an unbeatable board going first, that it doesn't really matter that your going second win rate isn't that great, because your going first one has to be like 90% plus. Alright. Dark World Dealings, destroying, di drawing, discarding, again drawing, discarding, activating my launcher, monster aborting, bring back the archery we discarded, and searching for your sage. You can now just normal summon, and you're good to go. Shell of Ghost, placing the card on top so we can synchro summon. Summoning Charge Warrior, drawing a card. Infinity Launcher once again, bringing back the two boys. And this time, we synchro summoning into something a little bit different. So this time, we summon out our Archfiend. Which right now, because we have no cards in hand, we can actually destroy his monster on the field. Which we choose to do so. Then we go back into our Exa Beetle, going into our Rhino. And you'll notice the Rhino has actually discarded the, or detached, the Doom Archfiend. That's important for later. So Launcher, bringing back the two dudes. Searching for the other launcher. This time Synchro summoning into the Coral Dragon, who is a tuna monster. So we can activate the launcher to bring back the Archfiend. Now keep in mind, this card can actually, once again, target and remove something if it chooses to do so. But there's nothing on board, so. Now because we have a tuna and a level 6, we can make out our Onimaru. Now Onimaru in this case, because it was summoned using Synchro Monsters, it is now 6,000 attack whenever it battles something, or it gains 3,000 attack. Also, it was Synchro Summoned using the Infinity Doom Archfiend, which actually allows it to attack twice a turn. Only on monsters, though. Then we use our Launcher once again to search for our final Archfiend. We could have actually re back the Synchro Monster if we felt like it, so we could have brought back the Archfiend once again, popped another card. But in this case, we're going to be searching for the brand new trap card of Suppression, because we noticed our opponent put in a Bacon Saver Engrave. And because we have an Infinity on hand, no, oh, so we have no cards in hand I mean, we can activate the trap card on the turn we set it, negating the, negating the Bacon Saver, and just doing lethal damage straight away. And that is why I think this card is really strong in this deck. It can be really good if you happen to get the 3 trap card going first option, and it's also really good going second, because it completely stops your opponent just hiding behind naughty hand traps and I want a destiny draw, wah, kind of bullshit. Yeah, one day they'll actually ban Destiny Draw and we have to keep worrying about Does my opponent have the Kite Roid or Karibo in hand? Can't, am I allowed to swing? One day they'll get rid of that absolute degenerate gameplay. Alright. So this, this is actually a much better example, because this dude has quite a bit of disruption for me to try to play through. So, two lots of back row and one dude who's going to quick effect swap into Big Witch for after then. Well, girl. So he first of all activates an MST to pop my Continuous Spell, which is pretty nasty because you really need these cards. But we do have Monster Reborn in hand, which is a lifesaver. Some of the dudes discard the last card in hand. Sage being able to send the Archfiend to Grave because it was discarded, so we can Monster Reborn it back to the field. Searching for another Launcher. Activating Launcher, Shell of a Ghost, placing the card on top. So now we can Synchro Summon into Charge Warrior, drawing the Launcher. Launcher once again, bringing back the two dudes, giving us another search. And we go into our Archfiend. This is when our opponent activates 
Treacherous Trapper, which you think, that's pretty nasty, right? I just lost two level 6 monsters. How can you possibly recover? Well, I still have two launchers, so... I don't really care that you just did that. I just bring back my dudes and keep going as nothing happened. I just lose the fact I can't summon Rhino now. Well, I still could, but I'm not going to, so I'm going to summon something else instead. Coral Dragon. Launcher, bring back the two dudes once again. Having a Sage. Is because I want to discard the Sage so I can pop a card on the field at targeting his Kimeta. Which then swaps out for his dude, which we can now activate the Dark Art Fiend to destroy it. Even if he had a card in the hand to negate that, it literally wouldn't have mattered. I would just summon this big dude anyway. It's like, this deck is ridiculous. Honestly, I don't think I, I could just search for the negate trap as well as another way to deal with it. There were so many different ways I could have dealt with what my opponent had here. It's like, this deck is ridiculous. I'd be pretty surprised if this deck doesn't at least make tier 3. Because obviously this deck's weakness is the fact that it doesn't really have a good way of going second most of the time. You can get god hands like the one I just showed you, but a lot of the time its weakness is it's going second place are quite bad. But if you actually get your combo off, the win rate must be ridiculous. So I'd be pretty surprised if this deck list doesn't end up being at least tier 3 on the tier list. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's, re uh, today's replays. If you guys enjoyed them, remember to leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up Mokuba, I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.